All right, let's talk a little bit about specialties in Italy now. Why am I interested in Italy? Well, number one, uh, Italy has just recently announced that they are going to essentially ban cell cultured meat uh, in order to respect their natural food heritage, which I think is a, an outstanding uh, measure uh, for a number of reasons. I'll go into that in perhaps another video. And the second thing is the Italians have decided that, hey, no bugs are going into our pasta. So if you guys still continue to eat pasta, I'm sure you can appreciate you don't want ground up crickets or mealworms or other, some disgusting insect turned into flour so it can and then be surreptitiously fed to you. So anyway, good job Italy for, for doing that. That is a welcome, uh, welcome move and I encourage everyone else to do that. So let's talk about, so the Italians got some, a pretty significant meat history. You know, they're known for pasta and things like that, but they have a number of, number of uh, really interesting meat dishes. So we're gonna talk about that. So the first one we're gonna talk about is one that I'm yet to try, try. I'm embarrassed to say this, but I think it is. it sounds delicious. It's called porchetta. And porchetta is one of the most popular dishes in all of Italy. It is known throughout a number of regions and it varies a little bit from region to region, but basically what it, what is porchetta? Well, it's basically, it, it's a pork roast that's been stuffed with organs, fat, little bits of meat wrapped in animal fat, seasoned and baked for special occasions. By looks, anybody who's seen porchetta has got to be drooling when they see that. So I've yet to try that. So hopefully when I get to Italy at some point, I'll give that a try. Uh, the next one is bistecca alla florentine or florentina, which is basically a florentine steak. Now this is something that, you know, the interesting thing about that is it only is supposed to come from dry age cattle uh, porterhouses particularly that are sourced from the so-called Chianina cattle. Now, the interesting thing about it, it has to be three fingers thick to ensure that it has a nice juicy center when you sear the outside. And these are some of the quality centers that are in place to make sure that the, the eating experience is, is it supposed to be. Asobuco, uh, which is another classic from uh, Milan region. Now it's braised veal shank that's been slow cooked in beef broth with a little marrow bone in the center. Sometimes served with a little herb relish uh, made of anchovies, garlic, parsley, and some lemon zest. Now the fun fact about this one, the first recipe was written back in 1891 by a guy named Pellegrino Artuzzi, who was basically considered one of the modern godfathers of Italian uh, cuisine. Now, he encouraged a number of basic tenets about Italian cooking that still resonates today, which things like using seasonal ingredients, keeping things simple, uh, having some variety without going overboard, respect for the food you're making, and be passionate and precise about what you're doing. Su Porcetto, which is uh, similar to some of the other dishes in other countries, like in Puerto Rico, Lechon, Asado. In the Swiss, they have something called Span Furkel. The Italians have this Su Porcetto, which is an Italian dish hailing from Sardinia, which is basically uh, from a suckling pig that is 40 days old. It is slow roasted over a spit, served table side with a number of, uh, uh, you know, usually at holidays or, or celebrations. Now. A uh, falso magro is one of the most popular dishes from Sicily, the Sicilian region. It goes all the way back to the 13th century. And it literally translates into fake lean, which means it looks, it looks lean on the outside, but on the inside, when you cut into it, it's actually surprising. So what happened is it looks like a lean roast beef, but when you cut inside, it's stuffed with things like cheese and prosciutto, sausage, hard boiled eggs. And so uh, during the cooking process, all these delicious ingredients kind of release their juices, which are saved to make a sauce purely from animal fat. Uh, sometimes there's some vegetables in there, but not always. Interesting fact, Italians don't generally eat a lot of salad. You know, it's, certainly don't start their meals with salad. It's often reserved for something after the main course in many cases. There are some really um, sort of odd dishes as well. Lampredotto from Tuscany is made from one of the four stomachs of, the, of, a, of a cow called the abomasum, uh, which is, you know, typically seen and utilized in some of the more impoverished regions uh, of Italy, but it's often served as a street food, kind of like kind of like a hot dog might be. Uh, coratella, the Italians of Umbria got creative with coratella and decided to make a stew based on lungs, hearts, guts, liver, and lamb spleen. Now you think about it too hard, it potentially might taste good. Now in France, they like to eat snails typically cooked in butter. The Italians often eat raw snails. So Italians in the Puglia and Sicily regions like their uh, snails raw. In fact, in times past, raw snails were thought to be a treatment for gastritis. Now this next one is called uh, mules balls. Now it's an interesting one. Its origins, origins are tucked deep uh, within areas like Umbria, Lazio, and Abruzzo areas of Italy, Italy. The name is actually a little bit misleading. It's actually salami that has been stuffed with two chunks of lard. And so this is a pretty good use of animal fat. So there are at least 80 other dishes that are basically all meat based that the Italians do. Italian Italy is a great food country in the world. Once again, you know, I applaud them in defending their heritage, avoiding all of the, the the crappy bug products and the uh, 
fake meats that are surely to uh, be introduced in some parts of the world. So let me know what you think. If you've tried any of these dishes, if you've got one that you know from Italy that you think would, would be interesting to talk about. Thank you guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.